First, I'll talk a little bit about um, why we address gender in climate smart agriculture. I'll explain some key concepts we use when talking about gender and also present some facts to help you see um, some of the key gender issues in agriculture. The other main area I will cover is an introduction on how to understand and address gender issues in climate smart agriculture. I'll talk a little bit about a guide that FAO and CCAFs produced um, that's based on participatory field level tools on addressing gender issues in climate smart agriculture. And I'll show you a little bit about um, how these tools can be used. So hopefully I can cover all of that in my 15 minutes. So to begin with, to talk about some basic gender concepts, I would like to use a, a cartoon to illustrate um, <clears throat> just some key terms. I think while we have a mix of gender expertise among the participants, I would say that probably most of us are more familiar with gender than we realize since it, it shapes all of our lives, even if we're not addressing it formally in our work. So this cartoon, which comes courtesy of the Water and Sanitation Program of the World Bank, depicts something that a lot of you working on the ground have probably seen, where we see in the small box in the testing and the planning phase, everything is going well. We have you know, government, maybe an engineer, uh, a local representative, are all happy with how things are going, but then in practice, in the bigger box, when the, in, the planning has, has finished and the implementation is in place, we see that maybe the plan doesn't really meet the reality of the people on the ground, the person actually using this hand pump. And I think this picture just depicts um, uh, something about gender here. We can see that this woman who uses the hand pump wasn't part of the planning process. Uh, perhaps because in her society, men and women play different roles. They have gender roles where it's not accepted for women to maybe, or, or expected for women to participate in um, maybe decision making at community level. However, they have a clear role in terms of collecting water. Um, and so to clarify, we're seeing here maybe a difference in, in terms of what men and women do in the society. And this is, is socially constructed. Gender refers to masculine and feminine. What characteristics society ascribes to each sex. This is different from your sex, which you're born with, in, which, is, which describes biological characteristics, the main difference being that females can have children and, and males do not bear children. So one way to think about that difference is that you are born with your sex, but your gender is what you learn. And as I think we all are aware, gender varies in different contexts, different, um, different societies. Um, <clears throat> And, um, and as I mentioned, this picture is depicting gender roles, so the expected attitudes and behaviors of, of men and women in a society. And we can guess that these roles were not taken into account. Uh, the, the project planners here maybe didn't consider who does what. Uh, and if they had, if they had carried out you know, a basic gender analysis, who does what, who has what, uh, maybe the, the outcome of the project would have been a little bit more successful. So we can start to see why thinking about gender from the very beginning is really important for success of our, in our work. Show one more cartoon just to uh, demonstrate. This one is sort of telling a similar story. The men in the meeting are saying women, they are too busy to discuss water as the women are clearly carrying water. So clearly they have a role to play, but again, regarding water, but it's not related to participation and decision making. So these two different cartoons from two different contexts are sort of conveying a common theme we do see, that while gender varies and is contextually specific, in most societies we see an imbalance between men and women, where women tend to have less power and less access to resources. So while gender shapes men and women's lives, we often see this imbalance, um, which is why we see it often when people talk about gender, they're talking about more of a focus on women, because there is often discrimination against women. And so we see, for one reason we address gender, essentially for human rights. We want to see that men and women are treated equally, that all people have the same opportunities and treatment, no matter where they're from or who they are. But we also see in these pictures that if you address gender, you're probably going to have better outcomes. I'm sure many of you have seen projects where a participatory approach, uh, where all people were involved, had better outcomes. And we also have very strong evidence that in the agricultural sector, addressing gender actually gets us closer to our goals. If we strive towards equality between men and women, we're much more likely to increase productivity in agriculture, reduce food insecurity, and improve 
overall well-being. And now I'd just like to present a few facts, a few pieces of data to help back up that argument that addressing gender inequality makes good sense uh, from an economic and agricultural productivity point of view. This, this graph here, I'm not sure how well you can all see it, but I'll quickly describe. It's basically just showing that women are a major force in the rural economy, especially in agriculture. Women, on average, make up 43% of the labor force in developing countries. They also play a key role in unpaid work. This graph, which is quite hard to read, but the, the yellow bars indicate unpaid family work in different geographical regions, where the green bars depict um, uh, paid work. So as you can see, in addition to the employed um, work women do in agriculture, they also are performing unpaid family work. And on average, in rural areas, we see that women typically work longer hours than men. Um, so clearly, from an unpaid and paid perspective, women are a major force in rural um, livelihoods. And this issue about sort of time use and gender roles and time use will come up again in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but despite being really key players in the agriculture sector, um, we, we find that um, the rights and resources women have don't reflect this role that they have. This graph shows the percentage of women compared to the percentage of men of landholders. And as you can see, for all geographical regions, women own much less land than men. We also find that the land they do own tends to be of lower quality, smaller plots, um, and with less secure land rights. In addition, there's a lot of evidence um, about differences in access to education, markets, agricultural inputs. All of these things add up to just paint a picture that access to resources is not equal. And this has major implications for the level of productivity and food security in female, male-headed households. Um, and FAO has done some analysis, which many people have probably seen already, that if we were to address some of these gaps, we would find uh, major benefits in terms of the yields women would be able to produce on their farms, the productivity that could be achieved, and then um, the resulting decrease in food insecure people in the world. We could see up to 150 million people becoming food secure if we address these socially constructed inequalities between men and women. So that was a very, very quick overview of some, some evidence about some key issues, gender issues in agriculture. And again, focusing on some inequalities between men and women. This isn't the whole picture, but this is clearly a critical issue that we need to address and can address partly through climate smart agriculture. So let's move into now a little bit about how gender intersects with climate smart agriculture. So not just agricultural in, in general, but when we think about the role agriculture has in addressing climate change, but also the needs of, of agriculture producers to be able to adapt to climate change, um, we can see gender issues have a strong place in this discourse. Um, so as, as many of you know, there are all kinds of climate smart activities. As Maria said, smallholders um, engage in climate smart activities that are location specific and knowledge intensive which is very similar to gender, right? It, it changes wherever you go. And, and really, to be able to address it, you have to understand a lot. It's not just about men versus women. I, I've generalized here somewhat. But of course, we all know that we don't, all women are not the same. All men are not the same. Even in a small community, we, you know, gender intersects with age, with religion, with status. And so a true gender analysis must take into consideration all of these types of, of nuances and power differentials. But um, going back to climate smart activities, farmers may be increasing their productivity through altering inputs or varieties or species they use. They could be modifying livestock management practices. They could be engaging in forest conservation practices. No matter where they're working, CSA, though, means adopting new practices. And of course, when you're adopting a new practice or modifying an existing practice, you're, you're, make, you're making a decision based on trade-offs. You could have multiple goals. As we see, climate smart agriculture is trying to achieve multiple goals. But of course, we have to take into consideration um, the weight that different people attach to those goals. Which is more important? Is it, is it securing household food security? Is it earning more money? Is it something else entirely? Um, it's important to try and understand how the different people involved in adapting these practices 
um, what they prioritize and what they want to get out of these practices. We also want to understand what the implications are of adopting these practices. As we saw in the cartoon, those who decide what happens aren't always the ones that end up doing the work. And so we have to be conscientious of how different practices can impact people's um, time use, um, their income, as well as their well-being. Because one solution doesn't have the same results for all. The guide I'll introduce in a couple of minutes explains a little bit more how to, go, how to look into gender roles and decision making. Um, but some key questions to keep in mind when trying to tease apart um, different populations, men and women's roles in, in climate smart agriculture, is to really take account of their perceptions of risk. And again, that helps us understand the goals they place, the, the weights they place on different goals. It's also important to understand the difference between who decides and who implements so that um, the decisions aren't being made only on behalf of people, but the people who actually will, will have to implement these practices are fully engaged. And then also, again, the implications for time use. As we see, as we all know, people working in agriculture and rural areas are very busy. And so anything we ask or suggest that they do or help them to adopt has to take into consideration their current realities. And this sometimes is different for men and women. Uh, another dimension that uh, was illustrated in a previous slide about, uh, that, uh, about gender issues in agriculture is the issue of access to resources. And this is really critical in climate smart agriculture because the very resources that we've seen men and women don't have equal access to land, uh, agricultural inputs, um, access to information. These are not always equally available to men and women and therefore their ability to draw on them to adapt new practices or to change what they're doing to be, to be responsive to climate change, um, their capacity to do this is, is, is affected by their access to these resources. And so we have to take into consideration the people's starting point and their, their capacity for flexibility in order to uh, take on new practices. Um, so again, here we have some key questions about how to get at these access to resources. Um, what information is needed, and is this information available to all who owns and who controls? Like decision making, there's a difference between who gets, who owns um, equipment and who actually uses it. We also need to examine the institutional support because, of course, there are uh, formal and informal institutions that men and women tap into that can be helpful in implementing certain practices. So lastly, just to quickly introduce the climate change guide that FAO and CCAFs have um, put together. This guide is designed um, in response to a need for more knowledge on how men and women are responding to changing climate, and also to help ensure that climate smart agriculture is inclusive and takes gender issues into account. It's based on 10 participatory tools and was tested in Bangladesh, Ghana, and Uganda. And thanks to this testing, it's gone through um, revision and hopefully can be expanded to include um, tools for examining these issues beyond the field level, but also at policy level. And this is an example of an output of one tool. It's, it's a standard participatory rural appraisal tool of looking at seasonal daily activities. You can see here on the left, women. On the right, men. This is for the winter season. The next one is the summer season. You can see the summer season, they look pretty similar. But in the winter season, women seem to be doing a lot of different types of activities. And so to carry out a tool like this, where you're looking at differences between men and women, and also different seasons, is critical for climate smart agriculture in that you can understand better who does what when, what times of year are critical for introducing tools, and of course, in combination with other tools such as community resources, seasonal food security calendars, we can begin to understand what community needs are and, and how to go about introducing climate smart agriculture. In conclusion, I just want to say that I hope I've been able to provide a brief overview of some of the themes this learning event will be covering, both gender, what we mean by gender, um, why it matters in agriculture, and what the some of the gender dimensions of CSA. This guide, which was introduced on the learning platform and is obviously still available, goes into much more detail. And um, hopefully, you know, since even this guide came out, so much more information and research has been carried out. And it's really exciting to see how much more we understand. Uh, I would just like to close by saying that I think while climate is changing, gender is also changing. And we can see climate smart agriculture as an opportunity to really promote also social changes and to seek uh, twin goals of, of pr promoting equality between all and also more climate smart um, agricultural practices.